Good evening and welcome to Let's Talk Automotive. This is episode 53 and in tonight's show we have the latest and breaking automotive news. We review the Citroen C3 and our guest is Werner Kutzer. And then of course we're going to play Game Time with Werner, uh, which I'm pretty sure I'm going to lose again. And then we're going to have a look at cruise control in our segment on how things work. And we're going to finally end off the show with Meme of the Week. Awesome, looking forward. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. This is Let's Talk Automotive. Welcome guys and uh, I think we need to start this right here with uh, saying guys remember please that this is an interactive show this is why we do it live on YouTube and Facebook so that you guys can be part of the show and uh, so if you have any questions or comments uh, or if you want to know exactly how old Peter actually is you can ask that in the comments below. We need below. Car carbon dating for that. <laughs> All right so guys please I would like to see some likes and shares and some yeah, some hearts. Thank you very much, whoever that was. And subscribe. Yeah, and please, uh, guys, if you're on uh, our face or on our YouTube channel, that's where we really focusing at the moment. We're chasing that 1,000 subscriber mark, so please, guys, go and subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. So whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, welcome. All right, Pete, it's been a busy week. It has. Uh, I think we need to talk about the elephant in the room, though, hey, I, th I think we need to talk about the incident. And for those of you who don't know about the incident, we're talking about Formula One and uh, Hamilton taking out his biggest opponent. Oh, no, did I say that out loud, or was I thinking that? No, no, no. I think you're right. This <laughs> and the stewards gave him a penalty, so he was guilty. So he was wrong. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I'm, I'm really upset. I, I'm, I'm, I have to say it, um, that I think that the more pressure Hamilton's under, yeah. the more mistakes he's making. And yeah, I think it was, uh, I think it was pretty shocking, really, the way that he handled it post the race I, as well. I agree. I agree. And I, I agree with Max's comments that it was unsportsmanlike. But anyway, that was just us and our opinion. No, but, did, you but see his, did you see what his dad said? What did his dad say? Yoss said... Toto Wolf doesn't need to phone us anymore. <laughs> the yeah, I, think, over. I think this is going to be uh, interesting, definitely going forward. What do you think? How do you think Max is going to re reply or respond? I think Max is going to be the bigger man, and I think he's going to keep the fact that he's in championship contention in mind, yeah. and he's not, he's not going to do anything Stupid. from a retribution point of view. Okay, but we've got some stuff lined up for meme of the meme of the week, which is right at the end. So please stay tuned for that. Okay, so uh, let's get the party started and uh, let's get into this week's news. Yo, Pete, so every week there's just new cars and new cars and new cars and this week's no different. So uh, this week we've got the new Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross. Yeah, so when the, when the, when the Eclipse was first launched, it immediately became very popular amongst Mitsubishi fans. Yeah. And this certainly looks the part. Eh? It does look the part. So this is sort of a, a compact SUV um, in that segment, which is very, very flooded at the moment, which is understandable because the SUV market is probably the only place where we still see growth. Yep. Um, but yeah, looks the part. Exterior, very, very good looking. I like the sharp lines. Um, so pricing on this, Pete, and, and uh, well, let me say this first. We'll obviously... Uh, do a review on this as soon as we can. Um, Nick Campbell actually said that uh, they'll give us one of these cars to uh, do a review on. It looks it looks amazing. Um, so pricing on this, starting from four five nine 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 five, which again confuses me a lot for the <laughs> two litre GLS, and then they've got a one point five turbo GLS as well. Uh, which will be the top of the range for for four nine 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 five. I mean, you know, it, what do you it, think it, is the five rand discount for? <laughs> to confuse you, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, that's that's the first one. Looking forward to that. Looks yeah. like a nice car. Um, Mitsubishi, you've actually got a bit of history with Mitsubishi, and you said it earlier, those cars don't break. They're bulletproof, you know, yeah. they're, they're over-engineered, so incredibly reliable. So anybody that's considering a, a, a SUV in that sort of price range yeah. 
should certainly give it a good on the short list. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Uh, agreed. Okay, so a while back we spoke about the VW Golf 8. Yep. I remember the pictures as the, the cars came off the ship. It was big news. Um, VW has come out this week and said that, uh, you know, first of all, release pricing because that wasn't released. And then uh, when the car will be on sale from. Okay, so the VW Golf 8 GTI will be up for retail from the 1st of September. Yep. Um, and price? Well, we, we featured the BMW 128Ti, yep. which is an awesome vehicle. Yep. And we pointed out at that stage that the, the, the current BMW 128Ti was a little bit cheaper than the Golf 8. Yeah. So Volkswagen have launched the, the Golf 8 GTI, which is brand new, at 10,000 Rand less cheaper than the BMW, BMW 128. So... Yeah. You know, the, the, the GTI, is, or the, the, the TI, the BMW TI is 679,000, okay. which is the way you like the pricing. Yes. Done. And then, obviously, the GTI is 669,300. The 300 <laughs> again. Yeah, so, so here's a couple of pictures, guys. Still, you know, you can see that it's the, you can see what it is, which is nice. I like that it's not completely different, but uh, yeah, it looks well, nice. Well, the front lights are quite radically different, I yeah. will say. I like that. I think uh, it will be popular again, as always. And if you consider <laughs> the, the, where car pricing has gone of late in South Africa with the, the fluctuations that we've seen in the Rand, I've got to tell you, I think this is a, this is a great price. Yeah. And yeah. It's, it's a lot of car. As it's a well. lot of car, so I expect that to, to be sold out sure. as it hits the showroom floors. All right, so that uh, wraps up the news for this week. So this week we had a lot of fun with uh, the Citroen. The Citroën. The Citroën. Okay, so uh, the now you, con you confuse me completely with your French <laughs> accent because it's so much more mature than mine. <laughs> okay, <Yeah>. so <laughs> let's get into this week's review. This is the Citroën C3. So, Peter Fouillon, again. We get the chance to drive the Citroen C3 and this is something that I've been looking forward to because it's something different. It is different and, and that's why we're going to do I think a bit more of a comprehensive walk around because there is quite a bit to talk to on the Citroens in general yeah. which we find the designs are very different to anything else except of course these lights <laughs> over here. So let's, we let's, <laughs> let's start with the front. So, so at the top, the strip light is your daytime running light yep. and your indicator. But, but you, you said we've seen this. This looks familiar. Yeah, the, the Hyundai Sonnet has this. And the compass, Jeep compass. The Jeep compass, when it first came out, also had these lights over here. So I don't know if it's the same designer <laughs> that's gone to all three brands or if it's the same three designers that went to the same design school. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it looks nice. It looks very nice. I, yeah. I really. Okay, so LED headlights. Which is which is awesome, and uh, which is weird. LED, LED, and then a normal bulb. Halogen. Halogen fog light at the bottom. Yeah. Weird. Let's talk about the awesome wheels. Okay, so it's a nice diamond cut alloy wheel, with important to note a 205 55 16, which is a very common size yeah. tire, and Michelin standard execution here, which is nice. It is nice. Um, Michelin obviously being a, a French brand as well. Yeah. So uh, not unexpected, but Michelin do have a very extensive warranty on their tires. I think yeah. it's up to 70,000 kilometers they warrant the tires. So yeah. Okay. So, so very funky looking air bumps on the side of the car. Yeah. Um, <laughs> something that we first saw on the Citroen, was it the Cactus? Cactus, I think it was. Yeah. So okay. this is designed for shopping trolleys and other motorists opening their doors up aggressively on the car. When it came out on the cactus, it looked horrible. Uh, but this, it's, um, it's a bit more refined and, and a little bit of a, a white trim there, which <laughs> makes it look nice. Okay, so let's move to the back. Um, this is this is really nice, eh? So it's nice and three-dimensional. Yeah, three-dimensional look. And when we say three-dimensional, we're talking about the depth as well. So these yeah. lights do have a bit of depth to them. Okay, at the back, before you open that, something that we have become accustomed to see at the back is reverse cameras but mm. no reverse camera on this yep. but the normal traditional park distance control sensors which are I, I almost don't use a reverse camera to be honest yeah. so i quite like the park distance control cameras i mean the park distance control sensors yes 
size of this boot, Pete? Um, again, uh, very. Is this before we go there? Is where does this fit in segment wise? Is it a is it a compact SUV? Is it a crossover? Is it a? I wouldn't. I wouldn't call it a SUV. At best, it's a crossover, okay. and it's compact. And considering that it is compact, not a bad size luggage Agreed. compartment in the rear. It is very deep, so there's quite a bit of a lip to come over. Um, but yeah, the normal, will you be able to fit a very big suitcase in here? Definitely yeah, will be able for to. For sure. And Might even be able to fit you in there, mate. <laughs> <laughs> spare wheel. Um, it's not a full-size spare wheel. So it's not a, you don't have a fifth mag and mm. a 205, 55, 16. This is a 185, 65, 15. So it's not a... It's not a, a mini, it's not a Mari biscuit, it's not a full size, it's a Goldilocks. So, so t <laughs> tell me, why would they do that? Uh, you know, ultimately it's, it's to give this a flat bottom, so that it's, it's a space saver. So it's a space, okay. And it's also a weight saver, believe okay. it or not. So you do obviously get uh, extra credits from an emissions point of view if, you've, if your spare wheel is smaller. Okay, so all in all, outside. We're going to get into the interior now, but yes, I like the look of this. I'm, I've always been somebody that enjoys something different. For sure. Let's get inside. Okay. Okay, so this is, this is where I'm almost more impressed than on the exterior because <laughs> when we say it's different, it's a lot different to what we normally see. From the trimmings on the doors and your, your first impression? Yeah, everything's symmetrical for me. So for those of, those of you that are OCD, you're going to enjoy this car. <laughs> because everything is absolutely precisely in its place. What is interesting for me is that the cluster itself is not overly complicated. So it's still a, d a analog cluster, not much of a digital screen effect on, on this yeah. cluster. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say it straight up. Funny fit is a, is a, is a low on the scale. Yeah, this is a very tight to tolerance fit. Yes. <laughs> but I mean, it's a small car, so you know, we, we've, got to, we've got to stop looking for reasons to, to be negative, I suppose, about the rears. It's a small car. <laughs> and, and, even the, and the Fritz fit in the front also a bit of a problem. <laughs> um, but yeah, fr so, so I, don't have, I don't have any leg room. Yeah, no, I'm battling. I'm I battling. Mean, I, I don't have headroom. I'm feeling quite cramped. Um, and the headrest at the back obviously needs to go up. Yeah. Uh, when you're sitting at the at the back, but down for visibility when you're in the front. But he has something that's interesting that where they they have been a bit clever in terms of the design, and that is is that to compensate for the lack of knee room, there's a lot of foot room Correct. underneath the seats that you can then push your legs underneath, which does relieve you of a little bit of pressure over here. So I don't feel claustrophobic. I feel. Like it's a tight fit, but I don't feel claustrophobic because I have got a lot of space for my feet underneath the seat. Correct. So Pete, yesterday I took the car to the garage to fill up and uh, the petrol attendant asked me if he could uh, clean the windscreen. I said yes, no problem. And uh, this is what I noticed. Why don't you just maybe pick up the windscreen wipers quickly to clean the windscreen? Okay, so whoa, whoa, whoa. You, you, you can't do okay, that so I'm damaging because, you'll, because you'll damage the, the, the paint work there. This one? No Same chance. Thing. So no you chance. can't you can't lift up the, the windscreen wiper. So oh, but but that's easy. We just open the bonnet. Okay, then. open it. Let okay. me show you something. Okay, so now the bonnet's open. Now lift them for me. Oh, okay. So again, still a bit of a problem there. Okay, this that's well. This one's up. There you go. Okay, so <laughs> I'm saying that there's a, a position in a service department in Citroen that you wouldn't see in any other place. So let me show you. Kom ga geïso zien. Ik wil je iets vragen. Staan ga geïso. Kom staan iso. Oké. Hou jullie denk van mij op. Om je te maken op. Oké. Now I can open. Now I can open and lift these up and change them. So in the Citroen workshop, there's a small little oki like this that needs to hold the bonnet all the way up to the top so that we can change the windscreen wipers. But they, I mean, that's an interesting position to put on your CV, huh? Very interesting. Hold the bonnet open, techie. Yes. Interesting, eh? Well, I told you the French are getting <laughs> revenge on the English. Let's go for a drive. <laughs> Pete, so I'm looking forward to this drive, but the first thing that I noticed when I got into the car yesterday when, when they dropped it off, and just now again, putting it into gear for the first time, because we, we're driving the 1.2 turbo auto, okay? And like you pointed out, the, the indicator for your gear levers there in the front, and 
sort of takes used to actually getting the slots where you put the car into gear. Uh, while I'm driving, can I ask you a favor? Can you maybe just run through this infotainment system and just show us what it's got? For sure, and, and I think one of the things that's impressed me about this is that it is genuinely intuitive to use. Today is the first time that I've been in this car, yes. and I know how to operate this thing immediately. Aye, aye. So the buttons are, are clear. If I want to go to my media, I press the music icon, and I've got my radio, I've got my sources, I've got my options, etc. So very, very simple. And then you've got a speed reading and recommendation. So the camera that's on the screen that operates our lane keeping warning function, yeah, yeah is also able to read road signs and give us an indication. That's so, I mean, pretty impressive. A lot of tech built into this. And while we're here talking about the standard execution on the vehicle, which for a small entry-level vehicle, once again, it's impressive if we have a look at it. You know, we look at pricing on the vehicle, and if we have a look here, the Pure Tech starts at 269900 And if we go to the top of the range, it's 324900 so call it 325 Yeah. So, great pricing for a car that's packed agreed, with features. Agreed. Is reliability and parts availability still a problem for guys like Citroen in South Africa? It's only a problem from a perception point of view. If you have a look at the facilities, and we've spoken about this with Peugeot, they've got a massive warehouse. In fact, now with this whole integration into Stellantis, um, they are moving into an even bigger facility. Oh, yeah, yeah. So the economies of scale are there. You know, any manufacturer has challenges with one or two parts here and there. It's, uh, I don't think it's going to be any different for, for Citroen, but I don't think they're going to have the same problems that they had perhaps when they relaunched in the country. Okay, so funny. Um, not a lot of cars have this. But if you have a look here, we can see if the occupants at the rear are belted yes. up, which is, I think, a very important thing, because especially with children, they like to undo their seat belts in defiance of their parents. And then the passenger airbag on light, so... So, you can switch it off. So, if we open up what is supposed to be a cubby hole, what which, cubby hole? <laughs> which is very, okay, very so small. Yeah, yeah, you can switch off the airbag. So, if you put the... The car seat in the front. You, you can, can put a you can put a baby seat in the front, which I recommend because then you've got uh, proper attention on the road instead of turning around Correct. to pacify the baby. But also, if you're under twelve, you really should be turning off the front airbag. How often do you use your cubby hole? Never. Never. So I don't worry the, about the, that. The, the book's in there, but but this is a valid point. You can't even put the you can't even put your book in here. No, you can't. <laughs> okay. Uh, the other thing that's missing for me is. A center armrest. Yeah, there's no real center console armrest. Yeah. Peter, that was fun. Very impressive, actually. I actually don't have a lot of bad things to say right now. No, look, I mean, from a drive point of view, as we've said, the suspension, nice and soft, very composed, very quiet vehicle, engine was impressive. It felt actually a lot bigger to drive. It yeah. I felt like I was driving a, a bigger vehicle. I agree. Okay, so let's, uh, let's get down to business. Ratings and would we buy this, yes or no? Um, so I'll start. I yep. think I've enjoyed this immensely. I enjoy, like I said, being a little bit different. So this is something that does appeal to me. I would give this a rating of 8.5 out of 10. And I would buy this. Um, but under the right conditions. So, so for my wife and my family, this is not the right car. No, for sure. So I think in the segment, again, we've got to, we've got to say that we, we're obviously rating all the vehicles that we rate per segment. Correct. Uh, look, there's a couple of things that uh, impress me. First of all, the build quality on this is superb. Um, the drive on it is superb. So as a daily commuter vehicle, this would be an awesome car to have. It's not going to be a family car. It's not what it's designed for. Um, it's got everything that we need in it in terms of bells and whistles. From a safety point of view, we can't fault it. So f in terms of the car itself, I agree with you, I think an 8.5 out of 10 is a, is a fair score for the vehicle. Would I buy it? It's a difficult one because uh, the French have left me twice. <laughs> and, you know, when you hurt me once, shame on you, but when you hurt me twice, shame on you. Aye, aye. Okay, that's a, a fair opinion. And that's it from us at Let's Talk Automotive and our review and drive on the Citroen C3. We'll see you again next time. Cheers, everyone. 
So Pete, that was a lot of fun. I really, really enjoyed that car. It's a, it's a great little car, I must say. A big car feel when you're driving. Even Fritz was saying that when he took it on the highway, he felt like it was a nice, sturdy, large car. So yeah, I think yeah. kudos to, to the way they've set up the suspension. Right? Sure. So, so for me, Pete, one thing that, that uh, we didn't have a chance to say, because obviously we, we can't say everything that we want to say, but um, that car should definitely be an option on a short list when, when you're in that segment. Because, you know, like we said, price-wise, yeah. features-wise, everything's there. I mean, think about it, Fanny. We are so spoiled for choice when it comes to vehicles exactly. in this country. It's scary. We yeah. way outperform ourselves when it comes to the size of market versus the number of vehicles that are available. Correct. And that is one of the vehicles that you should shortlist for sure. Okay, so what do you have to say to all those people watching now? <laughs> well, come on, guys. We, we want to see the comments. We'd love to hear from you about what you think about the C3. I mean, it's, it's our version of events. Yeah. Um, so it's important for us to, to see if, if you guys are in, in agreement with us and even if you're not. Yeah, that's say cool. Put those comments... Uh, put your, your thoughts in the comments below. Um, and yeah, please guys, like and share and go crazy. All right, so uh, I think the ladies are waiting for their guest. Yeah, they are. They are. I think that's why everybody's been so quiet, yes. to be honest. I think that's, uh, they're just so nervous yeah. about the, the upcoming guest. All right, so with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Guest of the Week. Joining us tonight, Werner Kutzer. Uh, I think the people back at home will probably know this guy from, uh, you know, sort of daytime TV in his role in Sievendelaan and currently in Getrout, Getrout met Rugby. L why don't you say that quickly? Getrout met Rugby. Ek sê vir jou, ek is amper hier te maal toe talig. Werner Kutsen, well thank done, you very Peter. much for That's joining us. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Barney, Peter. Thanks so much. Great Listen, pleasure. Listen, Werner, um, we, we actually met a couple of months ago for the first time, and uh, I just thought that I, you know, you've got such a cool story. I, th I have to have you on the show. So thank you so much for, for joining us. Let's start at the beginning and talk about uh, your background. You, you actually studied drama, is that correct? That's correct. Uh, I studied at Tux, got my degree in drama, and yeah, never looked back. <laughs> so, so I've been acting since then, and uh, yeah, there's, there's actually a, a bunch of uh, theatre involved as well. You did some theatre work before you, before you, is, is one of those actually you? Because there's so much makeup there, I couldn't recognise you. <laughs> um, no, no, luckily I'm not, not a, there exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad because I couldn't, but I the couldn't recognise you. The, middle is, yeah, yeah. the lady in the middle is actually one of my colleagues. Okay. 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 The villain, I think uh, right. Cruella or whatever. Uh, Werner, I've got a question. I mean, it looks like you've taken um, a, a classical route, if I can term it that way, into, into, your, into a professional acting career. So you obviously studied drama and you've, you've done theatre. We often see a lot of actors uh, that come through and, and they just start acting. Would, would, you know, would you say that having studied uh, drama, for example, gives, gives you a competitive edge? And would you suggest that to anybody who is looking to get into the arts? That is actually a very interesting question. Um, I don't think you necessarily get ahead in any way. Um, obviously, it just helps to, to do it. The, the more you practice it, it's like anything in the world. You're like The more you practice it, the better you get at it. Um, but there's a lot of talented actors out there. My wife is one of them. She never studied drama and uh, she got her role and she's currently playing in Getrout with me. So you don't necessarily have to go that route. But um, as a professional, well, let's call it a professional actor, <laughs> I would say go study something else. Do drama <laughs> as a passion project. Yeah, yeah. Get a degree in medicine or <laughs> engineering but don't go to study drama. Please, please, please don't tell my lecturers I said this. I'm just, just putting it out there. But, I, but yeah, like I said, there's a lot of good actors out there that actually never studied, and it's just it's raw talent. Sure. Okay, okay, first class. I, I've got a question, Werner, because obviously we got to know you, first of all. You, you spent uh, six years, if I'm not mistaken, from 2010 to 2016 with uh, Sieven de Laan. Um, and then, obviously, from there, you moved to Getrout 
met rugby, this Afrikaans English is getting I'm, I'm, me. I can help you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so the question that I have, after being with Seven Alon for seven years, obviously, yes, that's almost a lifetime, and then moving to something different but very similar, Afrikaans, you know, sort of stories and whatever the case is, was there a big adjustment for you to move from the one to the other? Uh, it was, and just in terms of the, the soap and the, the different worlds, you know, where with Sivan Alon, it was very family or everyone knew each other. We had a lot of fashion shows and <laughs> dance-offs, and that was Sivan Alon, you know, working at Oppi Coffee, giving Maria her muffin with extra room, you know, that was, <laughs> that was something. And then with Getrouk Medrakpe, it's a lot more hardcore, you know, pushing the boundaries, um, and also just a lot more physical, you know, being on the rugby field, field, yes. field um, <laughs> doing all the drills and stuff. So it's, it, it's definitely two different worlds, but it's, it's absolutely beautiful. Loved both, uh, learned a lot at Sea of the Lawn, obviously um, grew a lot as an actor. Yeah. And then Getraut is just, just pushing the, the, the boundaries constantly. Yeah, we've got some pictures of uh, you in your rugby kit as well. So Fred will put that up for us uh, just now as we speak. So um, that's a very, very interesting point that you made that I'd never even thought about. You obviously have to know a little bit about rugby and, and, uh, and play rugby. <laughs> and so, so did you actually grow up you know, playing rugby at school and after school maybe or not? I did. I did. Um, okay. I played, well, first of all, I actually started off as a prop. Uh, really? Grade one, two, I think. Yeah, I was, I was, I wasn't necessarily chubby, but I was, I was just stocky, a bit bigger. You were funny. Yes, <laughs> yes, that's the word. There we go. <laughs> and actually, um, I think it was in grade six. I moved to inside centre. Obviously, got a bit of length and and speed. Okay. So yeah, that was quite a big jump. And then played rugby throughout uh, high school, and then varsity struck. Thought I could maybe go do some sports at varsity, but yeah. you have class from eight till yeah. about five. Then you start with the rehearsals and finish at twelve. Next morning, same thing. So there was no time for any sports. Sure, so yeah, sure. my rugby basically ended in high school. Okay, so and, and and then you came back to rugby and and combined the two. So now you acting that you're playing rugby. Well, my dad always <laughs> hoped that his son would play rugby on TV, just oh, not in nice. this specific manner. But, uh, <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> like him, man. I think Pete's got a question for you on some uh, funny, <laughs> funny or strange events. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, obviously as a, as a, as a well-known actor in South Africa, you must have come across either a very strange scenario or a very funny scenario with somebody, a member of the public, maybe, maybe if you can share with us an experience or there's, two. There's been a couple of very, very strange ones. Uh, one specific one, I was, um, I had to go to the toilet. I was standing <laughs> at the crib. And while I was peeing, someone just shoved me from behind. I was like, Hur! just <laughs> trying not to fall into the crib. Okay. And this guy turns around, hey, you was that guy on TV. Hey, how are you doing? And I, so he puts out his hand to greet me. I'm like, listen, I just, I just peed. Can I just sort of finish up here? And then, yeah. You know, um, what, what would have been legendary is if you had carried on peeing yeah, when and you turned around. around. <laughs> that could have resulted in something very different. <laughs> no, but I tell you, Pete, uh, spending some time with these guys out in public, it is crazy. I would never want to do that. And everybody recognizes them. Everybody wants to speak with them. Everybody wants, cool. to, what do you mean? everybody wants to take pictures with them. It's, it's insane. But do, do, do people, like we, we see some weirdos um, perhaps in the States where they think that the characters are real people. Have you ever had that scenario where, where somebody's kind of taken you uh, in, in, and spoken to you as though you're the character still in, in whatever you've been playing? No, absolutely. Um, it, and it's just the strangest thing where, for instance, people would approach you and start talking to you and, and just sort of as if you know this person and then you stand and you go, what, but do I know this person? Try and figure out who they are. And then they look at you and go, but don't you know who I am? And I'm like, 
I, I, I do apologize. I do not know who you are. But you, I see you every day. You're supposed to know who I am. Like, but you watch TV. It's a one-way thing. It's, it's not a two-way street. So it becomes very strange. And trying to tell people, listen, but actor, this is what I do for a living. This is not me. I don't do these things in general. Yeah. I'm an actor. But yeah, yeah. It, it, it's quite strange sometimes. Okay, so, so this is a motoring show and we're supposed to let's talk about the automotive side of things and uh, I'd, you'd be glad to know that, that that is is a petrol head through and through awesome. and, and, and from, you know, growing up and family and all that sort of stuff, just look at that. Have, have, you, have you seen anybody love a car more than that? Sure, C certainly <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> I wish I could get my wife to love her car <laughs> like that. Maybe she <laughs> so, so, Varys, family background, you've got a bit of a, a racing pedigree. Tell us about that. Yeah, um, my grandfather used to do sprints um, okay. way back in the day. And then my dad obviously took over. He did, he was on bikes, he did um, enduros. He did flat track, he did, and then sure. to the cars, he did ovals, um, I think rally sprints. So yeah, he's, he, yeah, he, my, my dad can drive. That's one <laughs> thing I can, can say, he can. Awesome. And, and the, the, the bug never bit you? Do, you? do you like driving fast and, and going out on the track and the skid pans and all that sort of stuff? No. Absolutely, love it, love it, love it, love it. So obviously, I was born into racing. Um, never raced myself. I never really got the opportunity, but um, always okay. loved cars. We used to go to to Talt very often to go watch drags. Um, my uncle used to race serious cars. Okay. Um, and yeah, when I started earning money, I said, okay, well, now it's game on. So motorbikes, cars. Yes. Uh, you saw the the ST there. I, that's one car I loved extremely. And yes, then this this was a beautiful day. Um, the Mercedes uh, the AMG, AMG day. Academy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what what a beautiful day. A lot of fun. Just and did and the get, best did thing did you get is, to be, do some drifting on the skid pan? Yes, yes, we did, we did, and there was the the Gymkhana as well. And mm. I just I have to say yeah. it. Um, <laughs> In the day, they've got like challenges. Yes. And I won the day. Yeah, yes. it's, in your, it's, it's in your blood. It's in your blood. <laughs> so so you, you mentioned bikes, and uh, this is how I got to know you. Um, you've uh, recently got the, or not recently, but you, you've started taking up adventure riding, and uh, you got this BMW, beautiful BMW GS800. Um, this is definitely the bug is bitten beat. Oh, yes. I mean, listen, I, I, and I think anybody who ever gets onto a motorbike never looks back and yeah. probably regrets not starting it earlier. Eh? Yeah, 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 for sure. No, absolutely. Absolutely. So the this, thing this, is, is now, this is now uh, a passion. I can see it. Absolutely. Look, listen, if I could spend the whole day on a motorcycle, mm. <laughs> I'd be happy. Absolutely. And especially, especially, especially adventure riding, you know, just being on the road, being able to go off the road, into the mountain, down the mountain, into the river, you know, it's, yeah, yeah. it's just limitless and I, and I really, really love it. Awesome. Now tell me, uh, Vanna, you, you obviously have, um, you know, you, you, you did the trials for the, for the GS Trophy. Where's the GS Trophy going to be, when, where's the international competition going to be held? It's next year, hey, where, where's it going to be held? It's next year, and I think it's in Albania, if I'm not mistaken. I think oh, so, okay. yeah. Okay, yeah. Some, some strange yeah. place. So, so, tell us about the GS <laughs> Trophy and, and your, your experience, because was this planned? Did you, did, you, uh, did you always have this, I want to go do the GS Trophy type of thing going, or did it come across your path? No, it just came across my path. I always thought, uh, GS Trophy, you need to be someone that's got a racing license, that's probably yeah. done the Dakar, all those <laughs> things. And it's actually not what it is. It's your amateur rider, uh, owner of a GS motorcycle, can enter the, the competition. And um, yeah, just go and enjoy the day. I spend, uh, spend quite a lot of time on the ground. Um, not riding physically, 
<laughs> so yeah, that's, that, that's, that's my, that's <laughs> my little, experience little off road as well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so I think we, we sort of coming to the end, but um, fitness is obviously also a big part of your life. And, and with fitness and gymming and training and obviously, uh, you know, acting and motorcycles and family, wife and uh, kids and all that sort of stuff, and it, how do you balance your life? Planning. That's, that's all I can say is planning. When you've got an hour somewhere, quickly run to the gym, get back, learn lines, cook food. Yeah. <laughs> the little ones in the bath. So, yeah, it, it's a mission. It's, but it's we, a we challenging manage. thing, yeah. Obviously, your wife's in the same industry, so, so I'm sure that, uh, you know, coordinating timetables and that sort of stuff must be crazy for you mm. guys. Mm. It is, but luckily, we manage. That's, that's the yeah. main thing. Okay, Vanya, so, so now we're getting to a little bit of fun uh, <laughs> on your expense, unfortunately, because doing some okay. research, um, doing, doing some research, we, we've, there's a little bit of a theme. You're obviously a guy that gets hot very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> be, 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 because there's a lot of pictures of uh, you without clothes on, on your uh, social media platform. So, so obviously you like to take off your clothes and you get hot very quickly. You see, that's just a temperature thing, man. You know, we... Uh, yeah, so, I, so, I, I want to tell you a story really. about this picture here quickly. Did you see that last picture there? Did you see yeah. the last picture? Okay, that one there. So, so we've got a lady working here in our office, is Leandra. <laughs> and uh, she helped me with some research and getting photos and all that sort of stuff. And we heard a, a loud bang in the office. And I went back into the office and she was actually on the floor and that picture was on your, her screen. So I'm not 100% <laughs> sure what happened. I'm just going to leave it there. But I just wanted to let you know. Uh, and, and also for the ladies out there, we just wanted to give them something to look at. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so we're going to bring it back now the other way because we always have a okay. WTF, okay, WTF moment. We got, went through the pictures and we found this one. And try and explain this to us, please. <laughs> yeah. They never said acting is easy. Um, so yeah, that was, that was a, a little performance that we did in the show. So hence the, the makeup and the lips. <laughs> But uh, yeah, we do we do weird things some days. Well, Van, I've got to say that um, after uh, this photograph was put up on Farney's screen, we found him on the floor after hearing a bang. So Maybe like, he can explain what happened. Uh, okay, okay, those lipstick. Okay. Oh, it's beautiful. Uh, okay, so so Varys, what's planned for the future? Um, where do you see yourself in five years from now? Preferably on a motorcycle. <laughs> Getting paid to ride uh, no, a I'm motorcycle. Just <laughs> Absolutely, that's that's the the pinnacle. Yes. Um, but yeah, hopefully still acting. Um, still love the show. If we can do a couple of movies in between, I would love to do that. Okay, that's that's something that I always like asking. Um, who would you most want to actually work with? Who is that? Who is that? Do you have a local actor or actress that you would love to do something, some, some other project with? Um, local. Yo. You, you can even go, you can, you can even go. There's so many. What about, what, about, what about Pierre Brackenbach? Come on, they man. They work together now, man. <laughs> no, no. But listen, listen. No, that, that is a real gentleman. No, he's, obviously. He's he a legend. Is, he's my everything. He's my everything. So, yes, Pierre, I would definitely want to do a movie with you. Awesome. He is a legend in his own underpants, Pierre. That, he, he keeps on telling us. <laughs> okay, so now, now we're going to get to my favorite part of the night, because especially that little jab that just came my way. <laughs> Now I'm going to get Peter back. Um, and ladies and gentlemen, this is game time.
Okay, so ladies and ladies and gentlemen at home watching, this is now your chance to also be part of the show and you can participate. So if you recognize the car, please, you can get your answers in the comments below the video. For you guys, varies for your sake, I'm just going to explain quickly again. We're going to show you a partial picture of a car and then you guys have to guess. Please shout your name if you recognize the car, then I'll come to you and see if you are right or wrong. And... I'm the boss, and I make up the rules, so don't stress too much. Uh, okay. you'll, you'll, you've got a 90% chance of winning, Werner, okay? <laughs> Hi, Peter. <laughs> you know, you've you got to feel for me. <laughs> All right, I'm guys. Sorry. Here, here, here we go, here we go. You guys ready for the first one? You at home, please play along. Okay. Let's see your answers. Here's the first one. I forgot to give you guys a clue. 1980s. Yeah, you said 1980s. 1980s. Wow. Why? Yo. This one's going to actually blow your mind because it's such a well-known brand. Um, if it's a well-known brand, Peter, I'm just going to throw it out there and say Ford. Yeah. No. You're wrong. Okay. That is, you ride a motorcycle <sighs> with the same brand. Um, okay. Uh, uh, BMW? Yes. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely right, okay. man. Okay, well, yes. So I'm going to give you half a point so far. I don't so know far. what it is. Yeah, exactly, I'm going to give you half can, a point can so I, far. Can I guess? Yes. Do you uh, can guess? That's a Z1. Yes, absolutely right. Okay, well yeah. done. Oh, yes, there we go. Not, there not we go. very popular, but yes, I, I've always... The door that slides up and down, eh? What a cool, yeah, what a cool, cool. car. Lassen, okay, so half a point each. Uh, okay, are you guys, well done. Are you, are you guys ready for number two? No, Here but anyway, let's go. Let's see, <laughs> let's see. Here's number two. <laughs> Ooh, uh, is it a Mitsubishi GTO? No, 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 Peter, no. Peter, that's a Porsche. Yes. Um, ah. <laughs> uh, uh, it's the same one that Paul Walker... Didn't Paul Walker die in uh, no, the same type I, of Porsche? I'm not 100% sure. Is, uh, I'm going to give you half a point. I, I can't remember the model, but it's... It's it's, okay. it's, well, it's not a 911. No, no, no. no. <laughs> so okay. it's a 9... It's a 959. Oh, 959. That, it, nine it was Paul Walker's. Is it the yeah. same one? Okay. Yeah, that's the car he died that's, in. Oh, okay. Mm, okay. Mm, mm. All right, so it's one to well Peter done, and, half, and half a point sure. to Vanner at this stage. I hope you guys at home are playing along. Get your answers into the comments below. All right, here comes number three. This one's difficult, guys. Sorry. I'm going to give you a full point if you just give me the brand. Mm. <laughs> yes, I want to say, wasn't it the Datsun? No. But, but Peter, yes. can I guess and just say Mitsubishi? No. No? This one's difficult. Yo, you guys are not going to believe this. Yes, I don't know. Okay, anybody? No. no. Want to take a wild, wild guess? <sighs> Fritz, maybe show them a little bit more. Let's see if this will help you guys a little bit. Oh, gee, was not even the badge helped you guys. What? Uh, yeah. uh, no, I've got no idea. No idea. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a Subaru. Whoa! <laughs> what? I would have, I would have never guessed. Never. <laughs> no, myself. A Subaru XT. Gee whiz. Okay, so no points there. So it's still one to half a point. Werner, come on, Boyki. Uh, Fritz. Uh, I'm the, trying. So, I'm trying. So I'm there's, trying. there's two options here, Fritz. You can either switch off the mic or you can give Werner the answers without us hearing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, there's a call. Yeah. Fritz says there's a cold front coming. That, that might be what's going to happen right here. Okay, <laughs> number four is up next. Oh, I know this. Peter, that's a Ferrari Testarossa. Ah, absolutely correct, Peter. Okay, well done. Well this, done. this is the Ferrari that made me fall in love with Ferrari. Yeah. Your and I only know that because so I was 50, 50 in 1980s. Yeah. Exactly. So, I mean, you know. I <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I was, I was one. <laughs> yeah. That's really, that's really help. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here comes number five, guys. 
goodness, Fanny, what the you, you're not making this, it easy, eh? This, this, I'm going to give you another point if you just give me the brand. Because it's, and it's not difficult. This one, you're going to... Can, can I guess this? Uh, I'm sorry if I get this right, but is that not a lance here? No. Okay, then, then I'm not sorry. Okay, so you're out. All right. Vernet. Yeah. So, so again, again, um, can you remember? Can you remember the first car was the same sort of, well, same as your as your bike? What do you yeah. say? That's a what Yamaha. Is it? <laughs> so, 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 just give me the so brand. So it's a BMW. Yes, it's a BMW. It, yes. It, like a, a three. I'm gonna, yeah. Don't worry. I'm gonna give series. you. I'm gonna give you the point anyway. Don't worry. You got BMW <laughs> I'll right. I'll take it. I'll so, take so, it. So, so that's the E30 M3. Did you show oh, that wow. actually, Fritz? Oh. Look at that. Sure, wow. that is a beautiful car. I was a bit clever today, huh? You were, hey? That was a sneaky angle. Yo. Sure. Sure. Okay, so let's see. Uh, this is two and one, two, two, one and a half. So, Vanna, you're still half a yeah. point behind here at the moment with two to yeah, go. Let's, uh, let's hope. The next two, the next one is difficult, but the last one's easy. So, let's hope, uh, let's hope we can tie this up. Here comes number six. Okay, Peter. Oh. Peter. Yeah. That's okay. a Lotus. Lotus Esprit. I cannot believe there you got go. that right. Yeah. Yes. Uh, well done. No, I was also on the Lotus thing. Well done. I tell you why. I, a, a buddy of mine's father actually had that when I was at school. Really? In the 80s. Yeah. Literally. He had a white one. It's such yeah. a hardcore guy. Yeah. Eh? And James so, Bond has had that as well. When yeah. You, and it went under, under the water. water. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, so absolutely. So it's three at the moment to one and a half. It's all over, yeah. and I can I can definitely tell the viewers that it's going to be cold this weekend because this is the fourth time that Peter's <laughs> won in 53 episodes. But there's one more. There's one more that you can. Yeah, the last one. What, yeah, Fritz is such a nice guy. So the last one. If you get the last one right, you get five points, Vadnes. So you still got a chance to win, yeah. <laughs> It's How's a bonus, a bonus, okay. a bonus car. Yeah, we make up the rules as we go along. Here's the last Yo. one, guys. Here's the last one. That's a Werner? Yes, Werner. What's that? I would say that looks like a VW Jet, isn't it? Yes, unfortunately not. I was so excited. Do you want to try and get another guess? I'm going to give you a clue. This car is very, very famous for... It's uh, rally work that are done. Oh, uh, Ford Escort, isn't it? No, man. Um, <laughs> four, four wheel, four wheel drive, four wheel drive. Oh, uh, Audi. Yes. And which one? Yeah, which one? Uh, the Quattro. Uh, yes. Um, so whoa. that's five points. So uh, you've got six and a half. <laughs> You've got six and a half <laughs> to, to beat us three. Yes. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Sorry. Peter, I feel there was... But anyway, I'm not... I'm happy with it. I, I got my revenge on Farney early. You know? <laughs> they say that yeah. revenge is a, bish, a dish best served cold, but I served yeah, it pretty hot. It was <laughs> just hot. Uh, you on it. <laughs> <laughs> Vanya, thank you so much for joining us. It was an absolute privilege to have you on our show. And I cannot wait to go riding with you soon um, so that I can eat some dust again. So looking forward to that. Thanks for joining us. Thanks so much, Vanya. Take thank it easy. Thank you so much for having me, guys. All of the best and stay warm. <laughs> Will cheers. do. <laughs> cheers, cheers. 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 I tell you what, I tell you what, there's a, there's a, can you remember uh, Marius Lange? Yes, yes. So I think Peter Pretorius and Marius Lange should have a, a head to head with game time. Yeah, they should. I mean, they, they got, uh, I think, the majority right. Um, but I'm going to tell you that I'm, I'm, I'm really starting to think this game is rigged. You think so? <laughs> no, man, we'll never ever do that to you. <laughs> never. Uh. Okay, so Peter, um, how things work this week? What yes. did we do? So in how things work, uh, we're going to look at cruise control, and we're going to look at adaptive cruise control as well. And th those are two features that I don't think people use enough. So uh, we're going to have a look at cruise control tonight, and of course uh, this segment is proudly brought to you by Suzuki Auto South Africa. So let's have a look at how things work.
Welcome to Let's Talk Automotive and in this week's episode on how things work, we're going to be taking you through the basic mechanisms of how cruise control works and we're also going to talk to how adaptive cruise control works. So in basic terms what we have is a closed loop system in terms of software. In older models where we still had a cable driven system between our accelerator and the throttle body, we used to have an actuator that would obviously regulate the movement of that cable and accelerate or decelerate the vehicle accordingly. Those systems didn't regulate brakes whatsoever, it was simply regulating the speed that we set. Obviously these days with the way that the technology is marched on with vehicles, we have control units, we have sensors all over the vehicles and we have obviously software to drive the system. Having a look at just the cruise control system, the advantage of having cruise control is twofold. First of all, we reduce fatigue for the driver on long distance trips. And the second advantage is that we in fact have some fuel savings if we've activated our cruise control system. So how does it work? Well, first of all, we set the speed on our multifunction steering wheel, for example, or there are other control mechanisms depending on what make and model of vehicle you have. But nonetheless, we set the speed and then the control unit will make constant comparisons between the speed that we've set and the actual speed that is being measured by the speed sensors. And as soon as the system detects that the vehicle is either going too fast or too slow relative to our set speed, it will then make adjustments on the throttle to either increase or decrease the speed. Now the second iteration of cruise control is adaptive cruise control and this is where things get very very technologically advanced because here we now have radar and laser systems or a combination of the two that are physically monitoring the distance that we set between ourselves and a vehicle in front of us. Now in earlier systems we were limited in terms of functionality of this with respect to our speed so it only worked above 60 kilometers an hour and potentially up to only 180 kilometers an hour. But modern adaptive cruise control systems work from zero kilometers an hour all the way up to the top speed of the vehicle. And this introduces a very cool function with adaptive cruise control and that's our city driving function. So now if you're in peak hour traffic, you literally only have to steer the vehicle the car itself will sort out acceleration and braking right down to a full stop. So it makes this heavy traffic scenario much more convenient and once again less tiring. So the way it works is very similar in terms of, of how basic cruise control works. So in addition to setting a speed, we also set a distance between ourselves and the vehicle in front of us. Now the radar is going to constantly measure the distance that we've set with the actual conditions. And if for whatever reason we either get too close to a vehicle that's in front of us or too far away from a vehicle in front of us, just like the system adjusted the speed on this side, it's also going to make adjustments that will either increase or decrease speed to close the gap or increase the gap. What it will never do is increase speed beyond what we've set in any case in terms of a speed limit. Now we do get questions from time to time from viewers who ask about the safety of using cruise control systems for a number of scenarios. The first is what happens if I lose control over the vehicle and the most common question around that is what happens if it's raining and my vehicle starts to aquaplane. Now we do see unfortunately on Facebook and other social media avenues where these posts are put in place where they reference some captain in the US, some police captain who says that you know the majority of accidents that they witness in wet weather conditions, the drivers have had their cruise control activated and it's caused the vehicle to aquaplane and because they had cruise control on, they lost control of the vehicle. Now that can't, couldn't be further from the truth because the reality is is that between all of our different systems, as soon as the wheels lose traction, the control unit will simply deactivate cruise control in its entirety and return full control back to the driver. So there are no circumstances under which cruise control 
will continue working as soon as the vehicle loses control, either from a traction point of view or from a skid point of view. So we hope that that settles that and you're more comfortable in terms of actually using the fantastic functionality of cruise control and adaptive cruise control. So we hope you found that useful and we look forward to seeing you on future episodes on how things work. Thank you very much, Professor Peter. That was uh, entertaining as always and informative as always. I've got a couple of uh, comments here that I just want to get to. Um, <laughs> the first one is Peter Petrieri says he's ready. Okay, so le let me say this. If Marius Lange is available next week, Peter, Peter, do me a favor and send me your phone number. Um, then I'm going to set this up. So next week you're off the hook. Oh, game on. I'm okay. going to be supporting you so boys. Next, next week you're off the hook. Then we're going to get uh, Peter on a, on a video call and Marius on a video call and they can play against each other. Love it. Love How's it. About that? Love okay, it. cool. Uh, the, next one that I, the next one that I want to talk about is Ruan Lawrence has a comment here. He says, ah, miss. So uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had a very, very nice Bosporat on Ruan's farm, the three of us, the, the Let's Talk Automotive team. Do you want to talk to us about the miss comment? Uh, uh, miss. <laughs> It so, was to do with a shotgun yeah. and a clay pigeon and a certain individual <laughs> missing the clay pigeon yes. and one of the workers on the farm going, <laughs> sun, boy. sun boy, going, ah, miss. <laughs> <laughs> what a fun time. Oh, that was great. Thanks for watching, Ruan and Zamri. Uh, that's always, always, always fun. Okay, so let's end off the show with uh, another laugh. Okay, and this is time for Meme of the Week. Okay, right in the beginning of the show, I said we've got some Formula One stuff coming up. So uh, let's have a look. I think there's three or four memes or, you know, some stuff that we find amusing on Facebook. So this is Christian Warner says, reveals the new upgrade on Max's car and the new strategy for Checo in anticipation for the 2021 Hungarian Grand Prix. So that's a nice change. I like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know about the rear tyre grip, but uh, uh, that's, I, that's I certainly... True. Yeah, the aerodynamics might also be questionable. Um, okay, and, and check out the bottom. What is what, what do you think they're insinuating here? Uh, what? No, no, if you if you go down to the bottom Fritz. So so oh. is, is that a is that a kamikaze is that a kamikaze? <laughs> It does look like it, yeah. Okay, so, so that might just tell you what's gonna happen next next time out on the Formula One track. Okay, let's see what's up next. So we don't listen to the radio, we listen to the engine. That's such a redneck thing to do, petrol head. I li but I like it. I like, I like it. it. Uh, that, that won't be relevant in a few years' time, though, when we have electric motors. <laughs> yes, very true. Very true. Okay, and then uh, this is Valtteri, this is James. We're going to invert the cars. And Valtteri goes, cheers to traditions. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I tell you what, if I was Valtteri Bottas, I'd be ignoring team orders right now because I don't think he's got a hope in yeah. hell of retaining his seat next I, year. I, I agree. I agree. Okay, some local stuff. Let's see what's happening right now. Okay, so this is a police car. <laughs> and that's a policeman <laughs> giving that oak with that t-shirt a ticket. Uh, I would have <laughs> been happy with either line. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really, that's just that's just funny, <sighs> and that brings us to the end of the show. And uh, thank you so much for joining us, guys. It's always fun and a pleasure. Please remember like and share and go crazy. Remember YouTube, subscribe and put on the notifications so that you know every week there's new content. Um, okay, Peter Pretorius says brilliant. Okay, so you enjoyed it. Peter, did you get my message about your phone number? Please send me your phone number in the messages. Okay. We'll set up that uh, game time for next week. <laughs> Looking forward to that, for sure. Right, guys, thanks for joining us. Have a good week. Stay warm, and uh, we'll, see you, yeah, we'll see you next time. Yeah, and thanks to all of our sponsors, and everybody keep safe out there.